So hi, welcome. Uh, welcome to our webinar, Mastering Capacity Management Plan for Project Success. Um, this capacity planning and management has been a hot topic uh, within the industry, as well as many of our customers, as well as internally within our organization. And so we figured we'd give a webinar to offer some insight into um, how Tempo solves the capacity management and planning problem. So earlier this year, in conjunction with Forrester Research, uh, Tempo did a study and we talked to about 380 global decision makers in charge of increasing an organization's portfolio management solution during the next 24 months. And you'll see on the screen, these are where they plan on, and this is where they plan on giving their investments. And you'll see that over half um, plan on for budgeting, cost analysis, and then you see next number two being capacity planning and resource management, followed by dashboarding reports and time tracking and effort tracking. And these are these are things that uh, Tempo has tools and techniques for already. Um, but due to the fact that we've been talking to a lot of our customers, not only through one-on-one -on -one interviews, but also at uh, events like Team 24, um, we've noticed that capacity planning, capacity management, resource management, things of that vein have been a really big hot topic. And so we decided to have this webinar to offer more insight and give more information about um, the common challenges, the common tools and techniques in order to overcome them, um, and how Tempo solves those problems. And to give a brief agenda of what we'll be talking about today, talk about capacity planning and management. Uh, we're talking about what is it and, and how is it done today? We'll talk a little bit about the common challenges that uh, organizations face when it comes to measuring, managing, and planning capacity. Talk some talk about those tools and techniques that I mentioned earlier to uh, overcome this challenge and, and solve the capacity problem. Um, talk about how tempo does it and how they um, help solve the various problems with its various products and solution sets. Uh, we're going to have a product demo of one of our uh, one of our flagship products called Capacity Planner um, that's really focused on that whole resource allocation, team planning, individual planning aspect of, uh, of project planning and management. And then we're going to have a sneak peek at our new product that is in beta right now, known as Capacity Insights. And then whatever questions we don't answer during the presentation in the Q&A, we'll have some time at the end for that as well. Now, when we talk about capacity planning and management, what are we? What exactly are we talking about? Well, well, at its core, we're talking about the balancing act between demand and supply of your team members. Now, what seems pretty simple on paper is actually very complex, and I'm sure everyone on the call knows this because there's so many other factors at play. First is how do we measure capacity, really? I mean, it, depending on your organization or your company culture or how you've operated in the past or even on a team level, these way the capacity is measured can change. It could be time-based, you can use story points, you could use sprints, people, tasks, or even custom fields where you take a couple of these from the top and you combine them to create your own way of measuring capacity. It's not always the same with every organization. That's what makes it so complex. There's no one correct answer. And then there's other, other factors that need to be considered when you're planning and managing capacity, such as the availability of your team members. What are, the pro what are the hours required for certain projects? What's the maximum amount of work that you can put on your individuals and teams without overloading them? Uh, how are you prioritizing certain tasks and what efforts are required for those tasks? What are your customer expectations as far as completion of certain projects? And what are the scopes of those projects and how do you allocate resources depending on that scope? And also you have to take into account what work is actually being done currently. Uh, and, and then the list goes on. Now, like, how is capacity management done today? I mean, this is because we asked the first question, just wanted to reiterate that these are some of the things that we hear from our customers that I've experienced in previous organizations. Uh, you know, you could do it manually, which is not recommended, but sometimes that works for organizations. You can use spreadsheets. Uh, one organization I work with, we called it the big spreadsheet of doom, where we put everything on one and it just became endless. Um, it didn't become very efficient. We didn't know that there were tools available at the time in order to you know, manage capacity that way. Um, you have that project management software that you, know, you use Jira or Asana or, or, or Monday or, or programs of that nature, or you can have dedicated software for these two uh, you know, capacity management problems that solve it. And you can have time tracking software, which is something that Tempo is very, uh, very well versed at. And then you have resource management software too, like Capacity Planner, which will be demoed later in the presentation. Um, so some of the common challenges when trying to solve the capacity planning and management problem 
are uncertain demands. Uh, you know, the changes in project scope, priorities, or external factors can affect resource requirements, make it difficult to plan effectively. Uh, resource constraints, um, the availability of your workers. This can lead to, to bottlenecks, delays, or compromises in project quality if you don't address them proactively, if you're not able to see what your resources are currently working on before you plan more work for them. Uh, and, and this also leads into over allocation and burnout. Um, this can lead to unhappy employees and decreased productivity. And in worst case, sometimes the employees leaving the company because they're just so done with it. Um, lack of collabor lack of collaboration. Uh, I'm pretty sure almost every organization has experienced siloed teams um, that don't communicate well with each other. So they should they could have team members that are over allocated on some teams and some that are underutilized. So if the teams are talking to each other, you're not you're not able to make those connections in order to balance those workloads. Limited visibility, not having the availability skills, workloads, um, holidays, days off that have visibility into what your resources and teams and how much they're available um, in order to plan right in order to allocate resources properly and balance those workloads. Some of the tools and techniques to overcome these challenges. Um, you can leverage historical data. You can have that visibility into how you've worked in the past and what's worked and what hasn't. And this can help you forecast the demands of similar projects, as well as the demands of particular resources and teams. Uh, you can record resource availability. I touched on this in the last slide. You know, you can have one single source of truth for the availability skills and current workloads of your teams and team members. And this could be a spreadsheet. This could be a dedicated software. But it's good to have that one pane of glass that shows everybody's availability and everybody's uh, skills as well. So you can not only plan properly based on if they're available, but what are they what are they skilled at? What languages do they learn if they're in product development? What languages do they know if they're in product development? Um, that type of thing. Um, you can implement time tracking uh, and take note of how many hours your teams are working and how many hours your teams are working and towards which efforts. And as I said, Tempo is very versed in that, that field. Um, you can conduct capacity reviews. You can explore opportunities for optimization and identify which team members, as I mentioned earlier, may be underutilized or overallocated. And then there's workload balancing to see who's working on what and across all projects and people. So you break down those silos of those teams and you can adjust based on availability for an accurate forecast. So I talked about the challenges and tools and techniques to overcome them. Let's talk about uh, tempo and capacity management. So tempo, we're on the Atlassian marketplace and we have a, and we actually have products outside of the Atlassian marketplace. But all of our, our, our philosophy when it comes to having so many apps is that you can start with your greatest need or greatest level of comfort. And we have this modular, flexible, and scalable approach to solving major um, problems like strategic portfolio management, agile, agile at scale, ITSM, that type of thing. Um, so we have products that can solve various amounts of problems and also grow with your business, as well as being able to tackle a variety of use cases. And I'll dive a little bit deeper into that at a high level of using some of the tools and techniques that we've already talked about. So I talked about tracking time, uh, our flagship product at Tempo, Timesheets, when the first product that we took to market um, is great at identifying capacity constraints to help promote continuous improvement. Um, we talked about leveraging historical data. I think almost all of our products do this in some way, shape or form, but I've highlighted Capacity Planner, which will be demoed later, as well as custom charts, being able to have those visualizations on how much work is being done and to what efforts. Um, and we mentioned lack of visibility being one of the biggest challenges earlier with the polls. Um, this is th These products really help uh, solve that problem to so make sure you have that visibility and some of them being in real time. Um, record availability. So you can set realistic pr project timelines and identify potential conflicts. Um, capacity planner is a really good one at this as well. Um, and Gantt charts for structured PMM is great. If you have structure, uh, you can have, have the add-on for Gantt charts that'll show uh, the resource availability per project that you put within structure and see, as you see on the screen, if you're in the green, you're great. If you're in the red, your team members might be a little over allocated and you have to switch things around. Then we talked a little about workload balancing to adapt to changing priorities. We mentioned that being a big prior, a big challenge within the within your organizations, and this helps keep workloads manageable. You'll see some screenshots here of Capacity Planner that shows um, 
if our teams or individuals are over underutilized or over allocated and you have everything on one screen in order to balance those workloads out. And we've also mentioned capacity reviews where you can identify potential risks and bottlenecks and align with business objectives. Capacity Planner is great with the reports that it has in there and the timeline views that you can uh, utilize to see how your teams are being allocated as well as your individuals. Now, if you go into our website, we have a new website with new branding. It's really cool. I highly recommend you check it out. Um, but one of the sections we have in there is solutions. And we talk about these four big solutions that Tempo solves for. And Capacity Planner is a part of all four of these. It's a very valuable solution. Uh, it's very multifaceted. It's very flexible, uh, just like a, a, a previous slide that I said, and scalable. Um, so I, I want to turn it over to uh, our product, product manager, Mayank Agarwal, who's going to give a demo of this product and show how it solves a lot of the problems and challenges that we've already uh, addressed in this presentation. Great. Thanks, Chris. I'm going to take over the screen. Let me... Um, all right, so thanks for that uh, introduction. And uh, I would like to go over some high level um, features of our capacity planner product. Uh, and I would like to begin from how you would get this product um, installed on your Jira instance. So as Chris mentioned, it's one of those modular products in our portfolio uh, that helps with capacity management and planning and resource allocation. So once you go to Atlassian Marketplace, you will be able to find Capacity Planner. And if it is installed, you will be able to access it from uh, the app section. And the Tempo option here will take you to the Tempo uh, product uh, view, where the second option here is planning. And that is what we refer to as Capacity Planner. Now, within the Planner uh, product, we have two key areas. So one is for a high level capacity planning for teams. And these are the tempo teams. Um, and then the other section here is resource planning. This is more geared towards the professional services or uh, where individual resource allocation is more prevalent. And you have all the members of your team that are uh, configured properly and you will be able to do very detailed planning. Whereas team planning is supposed to be a little bit high level. And uh, I'll explain how, what are the differences and the key functionalities here. But before that, uh, as you start this journey of capacity planning, uh, you would be uh, setting up some core uh, functionalities. So for example, uh, when we go to staff section here, there are two options, workload and holidays. And these are essential. Uh, so workload is basically about defining your resources and their availability to work on uh, and how much hours they are supposed to work uh, for your organization. And you can assign as many workload schemes as you want. So for example, where here we have three different workload schemes and you can create a new workload scheme um, and you can define the users. Like let's say this is your part-time employees and you're doing four hours. And you can just save it here and then you can start adding members. Uh, so there is always a default workload scheme. So any new member who joins your organization will automatically be added to default workload scheme, but then you can move people around and this will become the baseline of their availability. And we will use this data in the uh, capacity management. So I'll talk about that. The other functionality that our configuration is holidays. So this, uh, can be configured uh, similar to workload scheme, uh, but here you can create as many holiday schemes based, uh, and the recommendation is you do it based on the geographical regions uh, where different uh, teams observe different holidays, and that will also impact their capacity because if somebody is taking a day off, you would want to make sure that that uh, day is configured properly and that uh, is being taken care of. So that is the primary configuration and for the team planning, you would also like to add or create some teams uh, based on how your organization work. So you can add as many teams as you want, and it's fairly simple. You can just define a name of the team. You can assign a person who is managing the team. So let's say uh, webinar demo, this is one team. And um, all you need to do is that, and then you can always add more people. 
And oh yeah, so for example, I'll make Patrick the lead for this one. And this team will be now available for you to um, plan on. And of course, you need to add some members to this team, for example. And you can also assign the roles of these team members, which will be uh, helpful when you are planning uh, for a particular role. So let's say I am playing a designer role in this one. And I have some design skills, I believe. Uh, so I'll add Figma, React. Uh, so the skill feature will also allow you to um, find the resources that have certain skills and then uh, work uh, or create allocations for them or manage their capacity. So these are the primary configuration like workload scheme, holiday scheme, and tempo team setup. And once you have these three things configured, you can go to planner view. And let me start with the resource planning view. and. Uh, a little bit background here, Capacity Planner started as a resource planning tool, a resource allocation tool. And um, over the last couple of years, we have start embarked on this journey to also allow for teams to plan and manage their capacity as well. But primarily, uh, most of our customers are using this for resource allocation, which is very granular level of planning. So let me give you an example. So for example, when I come to resource planning view here, and as I said, I would like to plan for people who have Figma skills. And as I said, as I configured my role in one of the team, you can see I found myself and there is a generic resource as well uh, who has this. And uh, once you find that resource and it can be, you can put other filters as well. You can look for a particular team, a particular user, Generic resource is another concept that I will not be diving too deep into it, but think of it as a non-Jira user that you can use to plan in advance. It's like a placeholder user. Uh, for example, here we have one. Uh, this is generally used when you're looking uh, to hire somebody or you know the resource is going to be available, but they're not available yet. So you don't want to stop your planning uh, or wait until that resource is available. You can continue the planning and then you can move all the plans and assign it to an actual member. Uh, with that said, being said, I would like to show you how you do a resource or how you create allocations. Uh, so here you can see each day we are in the week's view. You can also go a little bit more detailed, but I, I prefer the week's view. Here, if I want to create a plan for myself, there are two options. So one, you can create a plan that is always synced to a Jira issue. There is a, a new functionality we released recently. Uh, for this, you, you would like to have a Jira ticket that is required. Um, I'm not sure if there is a demo. So, and only one, yeah. So we have this issue where there is no uh, allocation already created. And you can see these are, this ticket, Jira demo 10, is going to be planned for Mayank, myself. And all I have to do is fill these three fields in the Jira ticket, start date, due date, and original estimate. And this data, uh, let me just create a, this plan. So let me uh, put like 20 hours. Uh, actually, let me just make it a little bit less. Five hours on 31st of May. And you can see this plan has been created now. And I also got a Jira notification on my phone. Uh, but here you can see it's still showing me that I'm not fully booked or overbooked yet. So I can create another plan that is the second type of plan that is not assigned to a Jira ticket and it's an additional allocation. Um, and you can create same, you can use same Jira ticket. It doesn't matter whether this plan is assigned to somebody or not, but you can always create additional plans. All you have to do is uncheck this option. And now if I select this, so you can see I have a green check mark that indicates that I have eight out of eight hours planned, my workload scheme. Based on my workload scheme, I'm supposed to do eight hours per day. And here I've planned myself for eight hours. And you can see there is a visual indicator for synced plan. This sync plan is syncing with Jira ticket demo 10. And if I change any data, and let me actually open this um, ticket on the side so that I can show you how the sync plan works. So here demo 10, and you can see those four, uh, the four fields, they were like assignee and um, I have to add some more fields here and you can always like add more fields. So let's say due date and original estimate. 
these fields are automatically added. It's just like not visible in the view for this particular. So you can see I have a start date, uh, sorry, due start date, due date, and original estimate five hours that I've added. If I change this to now 10 hours, because this is a synced plan, sorry, not 10 minutes, supposed to be 10 hours. Now this will over allocate me when I go back to planner because this plan is being synced. All I have to do is probably refresh my screen quickly. And you can see from green, it should go to red because I have increased the amount of time I'm supposed to work on this one. So this is why the sync plan is uh, really important where as a resource manager, you don't want to create an individual allocation all the time. All you can do is go to your plan time settings and go to automation. This is the latest feature that we have released and go to configuration. And here you have two different types of uh, automation features. So what we have just learned is individual plans, creating sync plans and non-sync plans. And I haven't gone to team plans yet, but that is next. But here you can see I have linked or I have kind of mapped these Jira fields. So start date, due date, original estimate, and assignee. As long as you have four of these fields added to any Jira issue, it will automatically create a plan. And uh, you can also uh, choose any other fields based on your Jira configuration. If you have different fields that you want to map for automating, uh, let's say instead of due date, you might want to have a target start date or target end date. Instead of original estimate, you might want to use the remaining estimate. Right now, we only support time-based estimation. So you cannot use story points or any other uh, type of estimation. Same thing with, uh, now let me switch gear to team plans. So as we saw that in individual <clears throat> resource planning view, if I find a particular user, you can do granular planning per day and you can expand and you can see who's over allocated, who's underutilized, and you can use different filtering option and you can also export all of this data and you can see this in the report. But what if your organization doesn't do this level of granular planning and all you need is like a high level team planning view. So that's where you would switch to teams and all the teams that you have configured, you can bring them into this one particular team planning view. And it's very handy where you have Let's say you're a director or somebody who oversees multiple teams. This view comes really handy. I have three, te two teams added here, Android and product demo team. So let me add one more team, iOS, just for this demo. And once you collapse everything at a very high level, you can see the teams and their availability and the current capacity breakdown. So you can see Android team for this week is 85% utilized and they still have like 0.58 FT availability and, uh, I'll explain how this uh, data is being broken down and presented here. Uh, and you can also switch from weeks view to months view or go to quarterly view if you prefer like a long-term planning view. So you can just navigate between different quarters and you can start like planning in advance. And this will inform you whether you have enough capacity for which team uh, for a particular team or not. So let me show you an, one example. So let's say I'm in months view and I have um, something that I need to uh, assigned to my team. There is a work that is coming up right now. We are in May, but let's say in July, I want to get our website revamped. And for that, I think the latest feature that we have released flex plans, it's something that we have just released, like, uh, I think three weeks ago, these are optional plans. They don't affect capacity until you link it to a particular team. And in order to create a plan, it's as simple as just clicking on this box and you can say, um, marketing launch so once the website is launched for new website and all you need to do is just put a title select the timeline timeline is already selected because you picked it from there or you can adjust it and it will create a new flex plan now in the life cycle of this you can assign a team to this plan to make this a team plan so let's say i will assign this now actually before assigning even I would like to get an estimate of this work, how long, how, how much work it would take. So let's say you talk to your team member or engineering lead and they tell you like, okay, it's going to take one FT for this duration. We need one dedicated resource. You can update this. Now this became a flex plan with capacity added to it. Now you would like to see, and I'm going to use this example just because I have created some dummy data here. So let's say for website revamp, there's similar flex plan. I have not assigned to a team. There is no Jira 
ticket that is linked here. My first step would be to find a team that can execute on this. And I can see here Android team is fully booked, iOS team is fully booked, or I mean, they're optimized, uh, don't want to overload them. But let's assign this work to product demo team because they still have 3.63 remaining FT. And all I have to do, actually, I just have to expand this view here. And then you can drag and drop to product demo team. And this has become a plan that is assigned to a team and the capacity is automatically uh, adjusted. Now, when I go into this plan, I can also link it to a Jira ticket so that it becomes more of a linked plan. All I have to do is select an Epic and click update. So now this flex plan that I have, uh, can just undo it quickly to show you the transition one more time. So this plan is now linked to a Jira issue. And if I change anything in iOS, so let's also see how the two-way sync works here. And um, by the way, Chris, keep me in check if I'm going over time here. Um, so let's say right now I have linked that plan to this ticket. I'm just going to refresh it. And it's starting on 2nd of July, ending on 31st of July, right? And I've assigned this to myself and there is a Tempo Team product demo. Now, what if I change the timelines instead of 31st of July, let's say it's only going to take end on 22nd of July, right? And instead of taking eight weeks, it will only take two weeks. Now, all of this data will be automatically updating, uh, update in our view here. All I have to do is just like sync it back and you can see this plan automatically got updated. So once you start using these synced plans, you don't even have to come to planning uh, view uh, if you're a individual contributor. But as a resource manager or as somebody who oversees the capacity, this really helps you because as your team is creating a uh, new task and working on different activities, you will automatically be seeing all of that work here in one nice view where you can have as many teams as you want. You can hide certain teams and stay focused. And in weeks view, you can also have the team and their individual plans that are outside the team planning view. So you have high level team planning view that are assigned to a team. And then you have individual plans that we saw in the resource planning view. It's kind of extension of that. And this tells you a little bit, this is more of a holistic view of this team. So they have high level plan that they're supposed to do. Then they have individual plans uh, that can be synced or not synced plans like this one. Uh, another uh, cool feature that we have uh, built here is you can also use work status filter. So if you only want to see the work that is in progress, you can filter it by that. Um, if you want to see something that is not done, and by the way, it's changing here. But let's say I only want to see things that are to be done. You can use the work status filter. You can also look for a specific role. So for example, here I am uh, for this particular team, I have a product owner role assigned to me. And if I only want to see all the people with that particular role, the view will be nicely filtered so that you can focus on that particular uh, aspect of your planning at this point. So yeah, these are the key features. And as I said, like uh, planning time settings can be accessed from here uh, if you have admin access and you can configure it uh, based on your organizational need and the different fields that you're using to automate uh, plan creation and capacity management. You also have these reports, planning, plan time report and plan versus actual report. Um, I don't think uh, it will take more time if I go into that, but happy to do a deep dive into a follow-up session. and. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it on my side. And if you have any questions, I see there's like a lot of questions. Uh, I haven't seen that, but um, I'm going to pass it back to you, Chris, now. All right. Thank you so much. But just wanted to, to talk about the capacity planner and some of the work that Tempo has been doing over the past year or so. Now, I know this slide looks a little complex, but I'm trying to illustrate the fact that in the past two years, Tempo has acquired a variety of companies, a variety of new apps. Um, and with those acquisitions, what we've been trying to do is, is not we've been trying, what we have been doing is successfully integrating certain features between the apps. Um, one, the beauty of Capacity Planner, and I think it's, it's sometimes a misnomer, is that you don't need timesheets uh, to have Capacity Planner. I think originally it was marketed as a add-on to timesheets, but it works very well as a standalone product. Um, it does... Um, integrate 
seamlessly with timesheets as a, and one of the big benefits you can have through that integration is plan versus actual reporting. You can plan for certain time for uh, your projects, for certain team members, for certain teams, and you can compare that to what actually was logged through timesheets. So that's that's a good reporting tool. It's a good way to do capacity reviews and just good way to make sure that you're, um, you're, you're working your projects the way that you want to. And course correcting if you need to. Um, you'll see that timesheets integrates directly with financial manager, which was previously called cost tracker, which is looking at um, the financial metrics and the financial health of your projects at all levels, not only looking at cost and billing rates, but uh, looking at expenses as well, just to make sure that you know exactly how much money your company is spending on certain projects, whether it's uh, you know, the resources and people or uh, other expenses as well. Um, and then with the combination of timesheets, capacity manager and financial manager, you have a great professional services automation solution as well. Some other Integrations that we've done recently is we've integrated uh, Capacity Planner and Structure PPM, or what was formerly just known as Structure, uh, whereas you're able to look at plan data. There's actually a plan time column that you can look at now um, if you have both products. Uh, so you can add that to your structures. And then also uh, the integration between uh, Gantt charts for structures formerly known as Structure Gantt, where you're able to use Capacity Planner as a centralized capacity solution for um, project planning within Structure and Structure Gantt. Uh, previously, when you looked at a certain structure, you're only looking at a uh, certain capacity for that specific project that you're working on, where if you can switch on the planner integration, you can see what the um, the capacity for all projects, for all teams, for all individuals are um, on that same structure screen. And if you have any questions about any of these integrations, feel free to reach out. Um, uh, or We'll provide links to um, the documentation within the email that's going to be sent out on Monday for the follow-up. Um, and so while we're on the topic of capacity, this is what the theme of this whole webinar is about, I wanted to give you a sneak peek at a new product that is currently in beta um, known as Capacity Insights. And I'm going to turn it over to uh, Patrick Savego. Whoops. Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot one more thing. Um, so yeah, what's next? Uh, if you're really interested in Capacity Planner, there's a few things that you can, few actions you can take, one of which is to uh, go to the Atlassian Marketplace and try it for free for 30 days. Um, you know, as I said before, you don't need timesheets for this. You can, if you don't have any other Tempo products, you can uh, download that and it'll still um, work really well with your Jira instance. And then um, if you're interested, if you're currently a Tempo customer and you're interested in learning more about new features as they come out, feel free to join uh, our early access program known as Tempo Lab. And as new features are um, developed, we release them there for about two weeks before we go GA to get feedback. So if you're interested in seeing what the latest and greatest is with our Tempo products, uh, feel free to join Tempo Lab as well. Um, and so, as I said earlier, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Patrick Savego, who's going to talk about our new product that's currently in beta, known as Capacity Insights. All right. So Capacity Insights, new products, beta, the future, right? Everything's cool. And uh, we talked a bit about planning and what you can do to forecast and plan for accurate and predictable delivery. And an important insight to being able to plan and estimate capacity is to know historically how much time similar tasks have taken. So one of the ways people solve for that is maybe they'll look at how many story points things took or how much time things took. So logging time in particular, right? And it can be one of the more accurate measures as long as you've got good input. So like anything else, if you get garbage in, you get garbage out. And one of the pain points around time tracking is a lot of people don't like to do it, but it is a very helpful input for making decisions. So uh, Chris, uh, Chap, if you go to the next slide, please. So there's some problem statements that we're uh, solving around of my organization doesn't have an efficient way to measure product development work or time tracking solutions don't gain traction with my development teams, right? What I was hinting at before. And teams of developers are spending too much time on non-development rated activities such as, and not focusing on the work that matters. So whether that's uh, meetings or unplanned bugs, right? Just being able to see what your teams are doing and not having that overhead, right? Not gaining traction with time tracking because development teams by and large, the team members want to be able to build cool products. They don't wanna spend time logging time. Uh, next slide, please, Chris. 
Oh, Capacity Insights is in beta now, and it utilizes adaptive learning to record development efforts. So it uses time as the primary metric of measurement, and it works in the background with minimal effort, right? It's just reducing that friction point of people having to go out and log their time. And we create intuitive dashboards for leaders to then see what time is being spent on so that you can have appropriate decision-making process. And next slide, please. So now imagine you are a development leader, you're a product leader. You want to know how your teams can pivot and to know that you're aligned with the right initiatives. Maybe you've got uh, priorities one, two, and three, and you see inside of our reporting that uh, development teams have been spending 40% uh, of their time on initiatives X, Y, and Z. There was an alignment between the work that needed to be done to move the organization forward and what people are spending time on. And historically, if you're not tracking this accurately, either because uh, you're, tr you're doing time tracking and people aren't capturing it, so you have invalid data, or you're not doing anything, it's sort of guesstimating work, then you'll have to, you'll have to make those decisions very far into the process. So with Capacity Insights, because on a regular basis, we are gathering and inferring the amount of time that was spent on various issues, various epics, initiatives, et cetera, and knowing what teams are putting time towards. You can very quickly make decisions to realign work to make sure it's going to what's most important for your organization. I don't know if you can see on the Zoom here, but you can also group by type of work. We've had a couple of customers in the beta program already pivot how they're doing it. They are their agile ceremonies because they found that their team members are spending about 40% more time in meetings than they expected them to be. So they made some changes to convert some standing meetings to be Slack conversations, et cetera. So being able to see that quickly allows you to, again, make fast decisions and have them drive the work towards what actually matters for your organization and actually move the bar. Next slide, please. So what Capacity Insights does at a big picture, right? Let's say you're talking to other people in the organization and they're like, cool AI, cool tracking time, cool removing friction, all that stuff, right? What, it, what really matters though is you're driving collaboration. These the reports and dashboards allow you to see what's going on across the organization. You're able to generate insights into your staffing levels. So going back into everything my uncle was showing earlier about planning for the capacity, knowing what is available. If you take these and sort of connect those dots, when you are able to see over time what your teams are spending time on, you then know how much capacity you need to reserve for them to make better plans in the future. So if you've got uh, unplanned work meetings, et cetera, that are taking teams time, you then can update your workload schemes that we were showing in, in Capacity Planner and be able to deliver much more predictably when you know what teams are doing. And then that ties into promoting progress, right? So knowing and be able to proactively uh, make your plans based on what you see your team's doing. But again, without that you know, big brother overhead of having to ask your developers, hey, did you log your time this week? Hey, did you log your time this week? Because nobody likes that. You know, the individual computers, the de developers, they don't want somebody saying, hey, why didn't you log your time? What they want to know is, hey, what's this cool thing you're building? I love what it's doing, right? And managers don't like to reach out and ask for people to log their time and neither do project managers. It's You've all seen the memes of, uh, project management and development and talking to each other and the, you know, somebody asking questions and somebody trying to do the work. And it's not because anybody's doing anything wrong there. It's just that both people have different inputs to do their job properly. And Capacity Insights removes a lot of that friction so that you don't have to spend as much time trying to ask what things, what people are working on, how much time they're committed to it, how far we are along in our estimate. And next slide, please. So I meant earlier, one of our uh, existing beta customers was able to pivot and reduce their meeting load based on the automated tracking. We had another one that found that they actually had teams working on an initiative that had been killed. And they didn't know because it hadn't made it through the management chain to their leaders until too far along in the process. They started releasing uh, update notes is where they were finding that uh, teams were working on certain things. But with Capacity Insights, they were able to see the epics and initiatives that the work was rolling up to and quickly identify, oh, that's actually not something we need to be working on anymore because we had to pivot our decision here and there's something that's taken a higher priority now. So now the question goes to you, are you a good fit for Capacity Insights? So these are the parameters around who's a good fit for the beta. Uh, it's You need to be using Jira, uh, Jira Cloud in particular, for manager development work need at least 25 engineers or developers on staff. The first iteration of Capacity Insights is around developers. That's the developer experiences where we're starting. 
down the road, we're going to be moving into uh, work management, ITSM, and being able to have a broader use case for who this is adding value for. But developers, considering our, our uh, customer base is where the, it made the most sense to start. Uh, next is you employ tech teams in product development or internal IT, right? So non-client services work. And that, that last caveat that the non-client services work is important because if you're doing things where hourly billing and billing for people's time is important, then timesheets is the better solution. They're not capacity insights. If granular time, if it's highly regulated, or if you are billing somebody for your time and it has to be highly accurate, then you want to be using timesheets and there needs to be the human involvement, right? But if having a highly directionally accurate measure is all you need, which is what capacity ads gives you. And I say highlight, it's still 80 to 90% accurate based on our uh, users. Then this is where it comes from because you remove a lot of overhead from your team members while still being able to make important decisions. And then lastly, if you currently spend time wondering if your teams are working on the right things. And next slide, please. All right, so if all of that sounds interesting, you can scan the QR code on your screen to join our beta. We're And then there's a link here too. So we're gonna be sharing this deck. So you can scan it or click on the link from the deck. And then we'll also share that link in the chat and you can click on it from there as well. All right, Chappie, thank you. I'm gonna send, uh, that's my time. I'll hand it back over to you. All right, thank you so much, Patrick. That was great. Um, so we're gonna try to answer some more questions that were in the chat um, with the time we have remaining. Um, I see one in here about uh, capacity. It says, when will, we have some well, questions about capacity insights and questions about planner. These are all great. Um, the, whatever questions we don't get to, we'll be sure to reach out uh, specifically to those who asked them, make sure we get an answer. Um, some we might not have, have answers to now, but we will get them to you just to um, make sure you all know that. But I, but I have one question that I'd like to answer live. When will insights be released and is it included in the planning app? So um, Capacity Insights is a separate product. It's not included in, in the planning app um, and it will be released as a beta uh, in the Elastic Marketplace. Um, I don't wanna mention certain dates because things can change. I gotta be, I gotta be agile here, um, <laughs> but but probably within, uh, within two months, uh, it, you will see it on the marketplace and be able to download it for free as a, as a beta app. Yeah, so a couple of people asked, how do you get access to it? Uh, and then there was also a question I'd like to answer here around multiple projects. Yes, so you can pivot on grouping by project, not by initiative, so not just by initiative or epic or, or story. So you can group your reporting by project as well to see where people are spending their time. Let's see what other questions we have. Uh... Some of these, Patrick, you might have to answer. Um, yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll, uh, so there's one here now. Uh, sorry, I'm just scrolling through for the ones I know I can answer quickly. Sure, sure. Can you report on time logged against time planned? Yes, we can. So inside of our reports, we do have a plan versus actuals report that's available. Uh, and actually for transfer, pretty much every time I uh, talk to a customer about it, that comes up. So that's a very common question and it's uh, something we do solve for pretty well. Um, Question, uh, Elizabeth, for Agile team, should we create a ticket for all the meetings they go into the Tempo app? There is a guide that I shared around the Tempo internal meetings. Uh, and that the same way that's used in Timesheets and Planner currently is also utilized by Capacity Insights. So one of the links that I've shared in the other answers around Tempo internal items gives the guidance around that for how the meeting should be tracked there. Um, and then it, we can we can get some more detail. If you're interested in the beta, we can talk more about that there too. Someone asked, do you have a cost for insights? Uh, not yet. I mean, it's it's going to be in beta um, when it's it hits the marketplace. But um, you know, stay tuned. We'll be sure to update that as soon as we have that an have that answer. Uh, for the from Kunal, the cost tracker on Planner, but it gives blank reports. The that is tied to the issues being t uh, used in planner alongside cost tracker. So the issues have to be planned in planner in order to forecast the cost. If that isn't, if that doesn't do the trick for you with just that off the cuff answer, then we can chat about that through our support channels and see uh, if there's anything else going on there. 
Uh, Patrick, I don't know if you answered this one already, but does capacity insights allow for other fields slash custom fields, components, priority, et cetera? I don't remember if it does in the beta, but I know that it will, uh, that that is on the roadmap for it. So similarly to the way other tempo reports work, if you're used to the timesheets or planner reports, grouping on account and then project or project and user or issue type, right? All those groupings, that is part of the, the roadmap for it. I can, let's see who asked that. So Shana, uh, we'll get the answer for that completely and put it into our recap on it too. So that way you're not left guessing. Um, for the question, would you not recommend timesheets and insights? There are different use cases. So we have some customers where both are fit, somewhere one is and somewhere the other is. So insights, it's, capacity Insights is very helpful for making directionally accurate decisions without time tracking overhead. So right now, this real target audience for that is product teams, developers spending their time in Jira, spending their time when code commits, all that kind of stuff. So that's where Capacity Insights really adds value. Timesheets adds value when you have work that is done that needs granular levels of accuracy. So professional services or regulated industries where you need to know every minute counts, or if uh, for now, non-development teams, right? So our integrations that Capacity Insights is tracking is focused on the developer experience at first. There's a question around integrations from HR platforms. I think there were two questions around this. So yes, that is possible. And we have a very rich partner ecosystem around it. And the way it's generally done is because the internal issues planning for holiday or you know time off and sick days, things like that, are essentially just Jira issues, right? They're just in a particular scheme that we recommend using so that it makes sense inside of Planner. The way customers do that is they will pull from their HR system and then create a Jira work log with the Jira API. And if you're interested in that, we have uh, several partners in our partner, partner ecosystem that have done that before and can help you out with it. So the question around, will there be an integration around timing app? Potentially, uh, if you, so Thomas, if you want to join the beta and provide some feedback around that, that's exactly the kind of uh, input we're looking for. So if you find value there and we can look at where there's a fit, that's uh, the kind of question that would uh, help and we'd be happy to dig into deeper. And what does Tempo provide a similar session for financial manager? Uh, yeah, at some point in the future, we will have one for financial manager as well. We've added some pretty cool stuff to it uh, and we're going to continuing to add some cool stuff with it. So um, we'll be sure to let you know once that's uh, scheduled. So for, uh, Alba, the question on capacity insights for development teams, uh, the 25 plus is the use case considered for the beta just for initial uh, value addition over time that will change. Um, so if you have a if you have a smaller team, that doesn't mean you shouldn't apply, but it, we may find that it won't be valuable for you yet. Uh, just to make sure we have enough information about your team to make accurate predictions of uh, of the time spent. Uh, how does Capacity Insights learn when time tracking is not accurate? We have a, a feedback functionality in it, so we have cu some customers that go no input and some customers that use the feedback. So with that uh, with that enabled, that function can send uh, basically daily recaps to the dev and say like, hey, it looks like this is what you did. Can you confirm, deny? And then as they correct things, it will uh, modify the model accordingly. Can I can I answer one question from Claire? Sure. Um, ask, you say beta products, we are about to use Tempo Planner. Will there be more increments from beta? So just want to make sure there are distinction between capacity planner that I demoed. Yeah. That is not in beta. That is a long-standing and one of our most uh, selling products. So you can use it uh, right from the beginning. The other product that Patrick talked about is Capacity Insight. That is our new uh, product that is currently in beta. And of course, there will be uh, additional stages outside beta. And right now it's in public beta. So you can try that if you participate in our beta program. Capacity Planner is same as Tempo Planner, correct? We just uh, renamed that. Yeah, we've gone through a big rebranding. Uh, if you check out the website, you'll see all the cool logos and uh, colors and screenshots we put on there. So I'd encourage you to check it out. Um, I see a lot of questions about uh, integrating with other third-party systems uh, like QuickBooks. And I saw one more Yeah, from Daniel. Uh, we have like very robust APIs and endpoints and even webhooks. 
So we don't provide out of the box integration with these third party tools, but you are welcome to explore our API documentation and uh, yeah, make use of our endpoints. And you can, I think you can export pretty much all the data that we have. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone.